This is a presentation on solid waste. What are the different treatment options available to us? So these are the sources which I have used for this presentation. This is Central Public Health and Environmental Engineering Organization. This is under Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, Government of India. So if you see here, all the manuals are available for different years and manual which we are interested is in uh, manual on municipal solid waste management 2016 so if you click here other options will come here you will be able to download the entire overview or entire manual for yourself now let's go to this presentation study what is the solid waste and what are different treatment options available to us so this is what our picture looks like few years back. This is uh, in front of gate number three. These are picture taken from internet. So what is solid waste? So anything which is discarded or thrown away, which is useless, is called solid waste. So this is a very broad definition. You can classify solid waste based on from various sources from where it is available. If it is municipal, solid waste, you could call it municipal solid waste. Then you can have industrial, and then there is a hazardous solid waste, there is a biomedical solid waste, there is a radioactive solid waste, agriculture solid waste. So there can be various solid waste. What we are interested in is municipal solid waste, which includes domestic or household solid waste, as well as non-hazardous industrial solid waste. Non hazardous industrial means let's say some industry is cooking food for its worker, then the waste which is generated from the kitchen of that industry comes under municipal solid waste. However, if there is some processing waste um, which may be hazardous or something, then that has to go for other treatment options. We are going to discuss municipal solid waste. If you see municipal solid waste is also called refuse and this can be broadly classified into rubbish, garbage, dust, ashes. So you must be using this word. This is rubbish and garbage lying all around here. So what is the technical difference between these two? Of course, dust and ashes you may be knowing, but what is the difference between garbage and rubbish? So garbage is which contain highly putrescible material that means which can decompose fast and the moisture content of garbage is around 70%. For rubbish the moisture content is 25% and it can may contain combustible non combustible material and it mostly contain non putrescible that means non biodegradable non or slowly biodegradable material. So you have glass, rubber, or slowly decomposable, let's say for paper textile goods. So all this comes under rubbish. Ashes, you know, uh, this is waste product, byproduct of some furnaces, which may be in houses or industry. So that is what is ash is there. Then there is another word, trash which is now more in India, earlier it was less. So trash, what is trash? It is old refrigerator, TV, so still we are not throwing it, we are trying to sell it, an old mattress. What is the composition of municipal solid waste? So you can classify it as a wet waste, dry waste and special waste. Various classifications are there, we will first study this and then we will go to another classification. This is as per solid waste management rule 2016. That is that you should separate three types of waste, waste, waste dry waste and special waste. Because if you are going to tell an ordinary people that this is biodegradable and this is non-biodegradable, then it becomes really difficult. But also, there is some category like slowly biodegradable here. So, so you call this dry waste. So wet waste, you have food waste, garden and fruit waste. Uh, this is all is wet waste, dry waste, paper, cardboard, plastic, rags, metals, glass, 
everything else. All this comes into crisis. And special waste is like in household. We have so much e-waste now, hazardous waste. Also like uh, pesticide containers, discarded medicines, CFLs. All this comes into special waste. So this has to be disposed of according. Now if you compare refuse characteristics of India with US, so first you can compare with other countries also. That's what I have compared. So the garbage percentage in India is more out of the total refuse, whereas in US it is very less. The rubbish portion of US is very high. For India it is very less. Similarly, ashes portion may be more in India because of the maybe tulas and all this burning in your homes. Uh, and then dust also, this is naturally present more in India. So because of these different characteristics has a net effect on calorific value and the density of the air refuse. So if you see the density of Indian waste is around 500 kg per meter cube, where the density of US waste is less. However, the calorific value of US waste is very high because of high rubbish content and rubbish is what dry material which is less moisture so indian waste if you have high moisture also you should note that this is density along primary axis and then there is a secondary axis i've created this is chlorophyll value so for chlorophyll value you should see side vertical axis and for density you see it left hand side vertical axis and the chlorophyll value of us is around 15 and in is down 5.3 similarly 500 and then 250 you can further classify into each component now this is the data which i have taken for chalanda and if you can see here is organic is 35 percent paper cardboard three percent plastic so similarly you have glass rubber Later. This data is not static. This data will keep on changing from season to season with time also. So if you wanted to purchase a pen drive a few years earlier, you went to the market and purchased pen drive. Now you brought something online. So with pen drive, you get a cardboard box and maybe inside also some plastic material. So you reuse pen drive and throw it. So whatever the waste characteristics in India a few years back, it's not seen to this. Similarly, we, we have big festivals uh, season in India. So in festivals, you have different kinds of ways. That's the physical characteristics. Of course, by knowing these physical characteristics and by knowing its quantity and chemical characteristics, you can plan for treatment options. Well, how much is the waste generated for the city? Per capita waste generated is also not constant. So it depends upon whether you are in a village, whether you are in urban area, whether you are in metropolitan. The other day we, uh, I showed you the president of Delhi has 10,000 tons of municipal solid waste per day. So you multiply population of the Delhi with 0.5 kg per capita per day, probably you will get 10,000 tons per day. So you do it. So this Neri is also very good institute. You can see whatever is available. Its website is available. I'm not going there right now. Also, you can quantify waste based on actual whatever is coming to your site. Or uh, if you're using landfill or dump, we, we will discuss what is that in a separate lecture. But on the site, how many trucks are coming? And what is the volume of each truck? So if you know the volume of truck, multiply that by this density, 400 to 500 kg per meter. That's that's what we have done earlier also. That waste, whatever is coming there, you can get this. Or simply you can weigh also. That weighing takes time. So this is how the roughly you can get. But this does not accurately reflect waste generation rates. Why? Because there are unauthorized places where the waste is there, people throw it. Then there is a waste re recovered by the Kabadi system, very good in India, so we recycle the waste. Then there are waste taken by the rack pickers from the streets. 
so that also doesn't reach the site so that paste is not counted here and also you can study the chemical characteristics of paste along with physical characteristics so so that if you want to recover if you want to use it as a biogas or you want to use as a compost you should know what amount of nutrients you can recover now this is the various treatment options available for municipal cellular based on all the characteristics which you study you can choose any one of these and uh, so this is what it should be so that's what is recommended by solid waste management rule 2016 that we can go for biodegradable waste it should be for biomethanation and composting so that that's the two processes so you know composting can so you can go for vermi composting also or you can go for windrow composting various methods are there and then product is bio fertilized whereas if you go for biomethane you can get biogas you know this process and then of course you can get thermal energy or power directly physical conversion is that you uh, go for the refuse dry food rdf so you compact it and then try to increase its chlorophyll value so can it can be directly used for thermal energy by combustion or you can use for thermal chemical and then you can use incineration also how it is different from combustion is that it's a high temperature burning when you do ordinary combustion the temperature may be less but if you go for high temperature combustion then some of the toxins are killed by that or are destroyed then there is a separate section in solid waste management rule that is c and d waste C and D waste is construction and demolition waste. So these should go for alternate building material. That means it should be processed. I'll show you how one of the industries which I visited in the next presentation. Then suitable waste should go for landfill. What is the suitable waste? This is very clearly mentioned in the manual which I shown that it should be non-biodegradable and inert waste and if it is a mixed waste not suitable for waste processing then you can put it for landfilling or if there is a waste processing plant then whatever the reject of pre processing and post processing that you can put in landfilling and uh, any non hazardous waste not being processed or recycled then also they have again mentioned what is not allowed this is what is allowed and notice not allowed so not allowed again biodegradable waste or garden waste so they have said it should be composted preferably then dry recyclables so anything which is recyclable should be recycled hazardous waste so it needs a separate site so this is not allowed in the landfill let's come again so out of these processes what process is suitable it will depend upon what type of waste so the question is what waste you have and then what process we can do it will depend upon that